introduce our first uh, guest. We are very honored to have Ambassador Jacques Lapouge. Please come on, yes. He is the French ambassador to Sweden and he was also French ambassador for climate negotiations in 2013 and 2014. He's a career diplomat. He has uh, represented France in many places. <laughs> and uh, he also has quite a lot of experience in the UN realm. So I will just defer to you, sir. Thank you. Is it working? Yeah, okay. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I would like to thank the SEI and tell uh, how happy we are uh, to be able to cooperate with the SEI in the, this very important uh, year of preparation of COP21 and allow you on a workshop we are co-organizing on the 15th of June uh, on adaptation in the climate change negotiation here in Stockholm. Uh, well, uh, I hope you will allow me to talk mainly on the road to Paris still, because that's what we, we are doing in the French presidency at the moment. But clearly, uh, it's a way to uh, prepare the discussion with the panel on the road from Paris. And I, I'll touch a little on that. Obviously, uh, Paris won't be the end of the uh, negotiating process, or, or even less uh, on fighting climate change. So just a few words, I think I have 10 minutes, on where we stand now, six months before Paris, uh, from the point of view of the presidency. And as you probably know, we have decided to encapsulate the objective we are uh, uh, fixing ourselves for the COP21 in the expression, the Paris Alliance. And it's a way to say that it's not only an agreement, it's more than an agreement. And in fact, this alliance will rely on four pillars or will have four components. The agreement itself, of course, the commitment or the contribution and the reduction of greenhouse gases, finance, which is a key element of the future uh, deal, and what we call the positive agenda, which are all the complementary initiatives which are taken by the civil society, and in particular the companies, of course, but also the local authorities. So on these four items, uh, what, what's uh, the view of the presidency now? The agreement is obviously the core of the mandate that was given in Durban, because you remember that it was in Durban that uh, the 2015 target was fixed. And this agreement it has to be universal, it has to be binding, it has to be transparent, it has to be efficient, it has to be fair, to include in particular uh, the differentiation between the level of development of the different countries. And it will cover everything. This is in the agreement that you will have the regulation, the common rules on mitigation and adaptation, on transfer of technology, on finance, on uh, capacity building, and above all on what we call MRV, which is monitoring, review, uh, and verification which is the instrument we will have to uh, be sure that the commitments that are taken are fair, that they are transparent, they are applicable to all, and so that we will have mutual trust in the agreement. So the situation now on this uh, very important and core of the, of the deal, uh, you know it, we had a first text drafted for, Geneva, uh, for Lima COP, developed in Geneva, and now this text is obviously too long. It's uh, 80 pages in English, 120 in French, with many options. You know how the UN work. Uh, every party brings its text. We add up the text, we add brackets, and then we negotiate. And so what we have to do between now and Paris is to simplify the text and to arrive, I, I won't say a figure of 20 pages or 25, I have no idea, but a short text. Uh, that's the work that has started now uh, in Bonn since Monday and that will continue uh, under the auspices of the president, the co-president of the ADP, because as you know, this negotiation is conducted in a group of the UNFCCC called ADP, Ad Hoc Working Group of the Durban Platform. It's not the presidency which is chairing that. It's two co-chairs, one from North, one from South. My minister, Laurent Fabius of Foreign Affairs, who will chair the COP, uh, said Monday at the opening of Bonn, we really would like to have 
a pre-agreement on the 1st of September, which means that during these two weeks of the bond session, we have something which looks like the, really the first draft of, uh, of, of an agreement. Because afterwards, we will have two weeks of formal negotiation left, one early September and August early September, and the other in October, which is very short. That means that in parallel, as presidency in cooperation with the former presidency, Peru, we will have a lot of informal negotiating session. Informal, it's a model of the Mexican presidency to prepare Cancun, which was very efficient, is to have a group of 40 delegation or uh, countries uh, representing delegation, for example, the LDCs or the G77 and so on and so on. So, but a, a small group of countries which discuss without committing the whole negotiation, but to try to get consensus on the main issue. There was one organized by the Peruvian uh, the, uh, on adaptation in particular, France organized one on uh, ambition and so on. You will have also the traditional informal meeting, there was one in Petersburg, in, in Berlin a few days ago, uh, and of course you will have the G7, the G20, which will be very important opportunity to give an impulse to the negotiation. So that's uh, the first pillar. The second pillar are the famous commitment, or how they are called now, INDC, Intended Nationally Determined Contribution. Uh, Perhaps you know that in the Warsaw Cup, the mandate that was fixed was that all the country that would be ready to do so should table their INDC before the end of the first quarter of 2050. The idea was to mix the top-down approach of Kyoto and the bottom-up approach of Copenhagen, you know, and to have voluntary contribution because if we want everybody to be in, we need uh, to start from voluntary contribution. You cannot find a formula to share the commitments between all the countries. But we want also to have the possibility to assess collectively these voluntary contribution to be sure that they are as consistent as possible with the target of the, uh, the famous target of, of the two degree. Uh, that's why we had this deadline of the first quarter for all the, the great countries. The situation now is mixed. Uh, we are at the end of uh, early May, and we have around 40 countries, but including the 28 of the EU, that have tabled their commitments, representing less than one third of the emission. But the, the positive thing is that you have the EU, you have the US, you have Canada, you have Russia, you have Mexico, you, are, you have important actors, and we know that other very important emitters like Japan and China are on the verge of tabling their commitments. And we know approximately what they will be for China. As you know, there were disagreement between China and the US at the end of last year, which give us a, a, a good idea of what the Chinese contribution will be. So the big question, I won't uh, uh, discuss that because probably uh, it will be uh, uh, d d discussed during the panel is what do we do if, uh, when we arrive in Paris, and even before, we see that these contributions don't add up with the target of two degrees? So what kind of mechanism do we have for the post-Paris? How do we build the agreement and uh, uh, the, 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 the table, the, the list of commitment, so as to be sure that in the long term, we will go back to this trajectory consistent with the two degrees? But I, I won't insist on that now. I, I don't have the time. Uh, we would like uh, all the contribution, I mean, on the main emitters, to be on the table before the 1st of October, because on the 1st of October, the Secretariat of the Convention will uh, make a synthesis of the contribution that will be published on the 1st of November, one month before Paris, so that we can know exactly where we stand. And we really need to have as many commitments as possible before the 1st uh, of October. The third pillar is finance. Uh, as you know, it's always very important in uh, climate negotiation because uh, very legitimately the developing country explained that they need additional funding for mitigation but also for adaptation. Uh, and perhaps you remember that in Copenhagen, uh, what clinched the deal, the political deal on the commitment, was that the developed countries made a promise that from 2020, the countries from the north would transfer to the, country, uh, the countries of the south uh, $100 billion a year of public and private money uh, to fight uh, climate change. So 
we had a good news last year that the Green Climate Fund, which is one of the instruments to reach this target, has been created, has been operationalized, and there was a first capitalization of the Climate Fund, more than $10 billion, which was the target that we fixed ourselves. Uh, so that was a good result. But now we need to get the real money from this, uh, from this commitment, at least half of it, so that we can start to uh, launch projects even before the, the COP, and that would be a very strong signal. 50% on adaptation, 50% on mitigation. But we also need to give assurances to uh, the developing countries in particular, in particular that the $100 billion commitment and pledge will be uh, followed. Fourth and last pillar, the action agenda. <laughs> This is very important, you know, the, the companies and the local authority, they are not around the negotiating table, it's a negotiation between states. But we need them, first of all, uh, to, uh, 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 to have commitment uh, and effective reduction of GAG now, before 2020. Uh, and when you see the kind of commitment that many companies or coalition companies are taking uh, around the world at the moment, uh, this is a very, very good signal. It's important that the company lobby in the government, uh, uh, to their government, uh, especially when they have subsidiaries in countries which are uh, less constructive uh, actors of the negotiation. So, to put it short, Many initiatives have been taken since last year. You remember the UN summit uh, called by Ban Ki-moon in September. Uh, you know about the global compact, about women business, about the WBCSD, all these grouping of companies uh, that are really very well organized to table commitments. Uh, it's the same for cities and regions. There was a big meeting of European cities organized by the city of Paris. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger with the Air 20s mobilizing the region and so on. And the French presidency also, of course, will have many meetings to prepare that. And these people will be in Paris. In Paris you said there will be, where is the moderator, 20,000 delegates, uh, but there will be also 20,000 representing of the civil society. There will be a huge village of the civil society in Paris, plus 5,000 journalists, so 5,000 in, in Le Bourget. Uh, that will be quite a logistical challenge. Uh, so, to conclude, uh, what is the work of the presidency? We are the presidency, you know, we won't decide the agreement. We are just a facilitator. And as I say, the negotiation is in the ADP. We are not even chairing the ADP. So we are moving behind the curtains. And what's important is the mobilization. And I, I can assure you that uh, the, the French president is, and the French foreign affairs ministers are extremely mobilized. You know, uh, President Hollande uh, this morning is in Marseille for a meeting of the Mediterranean country on climate change. He was in Martinique, he was in Filipino. Uh, and Minister Fabius, he cannot have a bilateral meeting uh, on f with the foreign affairs counterpart without putting climate change at the top of the agenda. So we do our best. It doesn't mean that we, uh, we will achieve uh, success. It does not depend only on us, but we do our best to have the most ambitious, the most binding, uh, and the most uh, f fair, the fairest and the widest, of course, possible agreement in Paris. And uh, to follow up on what was said in the previous panel, obviously what will happen in Addis Ababa in July on funding uh, development and in New York in September on post-2015 is very important. If we don't have a success in these two meetings, it will definitely not create the right mood to prepare Paris because the ne climate negotiations are still very much uh, a negotiation which involves some kind of north-south logic. So I will stop there because they've been a little too long. Sorry. No, this is great. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Please stay on the stage.